that's the, the name of the swamp. Man check. How Man do shop. I pronounce? That looks more like a native word than a French word. Hey, I'm Googling it. We'll see. Uh, find a news report from the area. We tried to pronounce these Louisiana towns. Remember, uh, one of the Seattle stations hired some new weather guy, and they were they had a commercial of him trying to pronounce the various regions. That's fair. Uh, the baby's Cajun, by the way. All right. Gangi has decided. Of course she does. I thought he was a werewolf of London, because he goes aye. <laughs> no. All right. It is. <laughs> It uh, is suggested. Is this just fucking with me? It's Wikipedia. Dr. John R. Swanton. Swanton. He's a Swanton bomb. A linguist who worked with Native American languages suggested that the name Monchak is derived from I'm a Shaka, which is a Choctaw word meaning the rear entrance. It's the Booze and Spirits Podcast. And he's completely sober in this excited. That's weird. That's right. Uh, I'm Nick McDonald. I'm Kate McDonald. Theo's here with me, licking his butt. And that's like a drink with death. <laughs> also, Theo's a dog, just an FYI. <laughs> he's in some of our bonus clip stuff, but I don't think he's been on the main podcast yet. <laughs> he derps real hard. Real, real hard. <laughs> I derp derp. I do think that... Uh, our last podcast went very well, despite the technical problems. I think a lot of that might have had to do with the sobriety. So I'm kind of wondering how much we should be drinking in the future during the podcast. I mean, it's like the happy medium. We need to, I personally feel I need to drink enough to loosen up a little bit, but not so much that I'm out of fucks to give because then <laughs> things get real crude. Like I just said, I'm out of fucks to give. And we're realize, like 40 seconds into this. I like dropped several left bombs. You realize no fucks Katie is everybody's favorite Katie, right? <laughs> no rules, Curtis. Uh, my friend Katie, when she's drunk enough, is no rules, Curtis. So. <laughs> All right. We might bring her on someday just for, for the entertainment value. <laughs> when I met her, there was me, Welsh Katie, and another Katie who we just, the kitchen started calling Caddy, and that's just her name now. So no rules, Curtis is Caddy slash Katie. For all of you playing along at home. Too much Katie's. Not a thing. Big fucking Katie comeuppance. Just used to hire people with my name for fun. <laughs> Just to confuse everyone else. Mm-hmm. Well, today we deemed we were going to talk about swamp ghosts. Swamp haunting? Swamp? Swamp? Swampity swamp? Swamp crouch? Mm. No, not swamp crouch. <laughs> we're not. Let's not talk about swamp crouch. Just saying. It's an option. So... My story, I guess I'll get going, right? Is there something else we need to talk about before I get going? Um, stickers are live. We have our first Patreon. I just got coffee mugs delivered for a giveaway we're working on. I'm working on that. Um, I'm going to go hunting for Alice Ream in person this weekend. That's going to be... Nick's going to go try to bang a ghost with his wife. <laughs> That's not what's happening. <laughs> and you have... A swampity drink? I do have a swampity drink. Right. I don't know if we uh, settled on a name, but we'll we'll fight it out. Yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, I do remember getting in a mud clot fight with you in a swamp once as children. <laughs> there was a lot of dirt clod fights as kids. Do kids still play with dirt clods? Do they even know what a dirt clod is? I think they play with YouTube now. <sighs> All right. I don't know. Maybe country kids. I don't know a lot of farm kids right now. Yeah, they probably. If they don't, then then there is no hope for America. So, back to the swamp ghosts, away from the dirt clods. My story is about the uh, ghosts of Hannah's Creek Swamp in North Carolina again, just like my story from the last episode. Um, there's a there's a theme here. So, th- something that kind of doesn't get talked about a lot today, because everyone wants to paint the South as complete and utter bastards during the Civil War. 
<laughs> but something that's kind of overlooked now is that the Union soldiers were the ones doing a lot of the marching down south. And uh, and I know that this is, I, I read that this was true for North Carolina. I don't know if it was true throughout the south, but uh, while they were marching across North Carolina, they were given leave to just raid and plunder houses and farms as they pushed south. They were given orders never to harm an unarmed civilian and to make sure that they left each family with enough food and supplies to survive. But other than that, it was kind of, you know, free pickings. So that's that's the basis for this story. That's uh, charming. Yeah. Um, most of the soldiers, they, you know, reportedly only took liberties up to what their orders would allow. But there was one group under Colonel David Fanning, and uh, his group pillaged and plundered at will, leaving trails of bodies and ashes and destruction in their wake. Uh, and this group became known as Fanning's Marauders. So one of the homes assaulted by the Marauders was that belonging to Confederate Colonel John Saunders and his wife near the town of Smithfield. Fanning killed them both, raised the homestead to the ground, and unknowingly, and this sealed his own fate, is uh, Colonel Sanders, Sanders, not Colonel Sanders, Chris, that's going to be Wow, a, Colonel Sanders showed up. I knew this was going to be a problem. <laughs> this Colonel Saunders, I'm going to say Sanders, <laughs> this whole goddamn thing. Colonel. Now I want chicken. <laughs> Colonel Saunders' son was also in the Confederate Army. He was Lieutenant John Saunders, Jr., and he vowed revenge on the men who slaughtered his family and destroyed his childhood home. So the Confederates, they knew that, you know, here was a man who was well properly motivated. So they tasked him and his unit to the area near Smithfield to ferret out any guerrilla fighters, any bandits, any other individuals who were taking advantage of the war. And they did their job pretty well. But they were they were on a deadline and before they had to be moved somewhere else and they were running out of time and Saunders still had not found Fanning and his marauders. Finally, the rumor mill caught up with him. Saunders caught wind of a group of Union soldiers hiding out on an island in Hannah's Creek Swamp. So the Confederates borrowed clothes from civilians so that they wouldn't alert any scouts the Yankees might have and they rode out to the small island under cover of night. I don't know why they had to go at night and in disguise. It's but like that's... social distancing and wearing a mask. It's just better. It's safer. You just gotta be as safe as possible. Okay. <laughs> by the time the marauders realized what was happening, they were completely surrounded by the Confederates. Lieutenant Saunders ordered all his men to search the area, search the camp, and he took the liberty of searching Colonel Fanning himself. Saunders, when he searched Fanning, found around Fanning's neck a small gold crucifix that Saunders immediately recognized as belonging to his mother, and his rage instantly took over. That's fair. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so, Saunders hoisted Fanning up, held him at gunpoint, and ordered all of the marauders to be hung right then and there on the island, forcing Fanning to watch as his men were strung up. Then Saunders took Fanning and marched him back to Smithfield, to the Saunders familial home, and hung Fanning, stretching his neck directly over the newly laid headstones of his parents. Today, visitors to Hannah's Creek Swamp report cold spots and unexplained feelings of dread, you know, like a swamp, <laughs> Some report hearing the voices of men begging for their lives, and others hear the creak of branches heavy with the weight of hanging bodies. Some even say they've seen the bodies themselves, as many as 50, hanging from the trees on a moonlit night. So, research doesn't turn up any David Fannings from the Civil War. <laughs> Shocker. My, my, you know, I, I love that we came into this and my motto was, ah, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. And then I'll tell a good story and then tell you all the truth that gets in the way. Likewise, you know, if you want to look up John Saunders, that turns into a crapshoot because there, I found a John C.C. C. Saunders. I found a John L. Saunders. I found a John Sherman Saunders. I found John Saunders Gooch. <laughs> That's just not a nice name. Like, why would you do that to your child? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, but, you know, I really couldn't tell whether or not any of them were either of the Saunders from the story. Now, interestingly, there is a David Fanning from the Revolutionary War in the North Carolina era. And this Fanning was an infamous Tory and British loyalist. 
he was actually given the rank of colonel in the British Army. Fanning was, uh, th- this Fanning, the revolutionary Fanning, was infamous for his bloodthirst and regularly killing men unhonorably off the battlefield. So when the war ended and the Brits were being driven off the continent, Fanning's atrocities were so numerous that he was one of only a handful of men that the state of North Carolina refused to pardon for his wartime activities. So he was forced to join the British in evacuating from Charlotte. He died a few decades before the Civil War ever started, so he couldn't be that Fanning that, that the story discusses. But here's, here's how I look at it. And this kind of lends back to some of the stuff that I found when looking at the Cora tree. Haunting aside, I kind of like to think that this story is a way to extract revenge on Fanning in a way that the state was and the people were never actually allowed to do. He wrought some serious damage on the people of North Carolina, physically and mentally, and he, he slaughtered people like he was some kind of movie monster that he just got away and never got punished for it. So the way I kind of look at it is stories like this and stories like the Cora tree where, you know, the Southerners were nice and nice and hospitable and the brash Massachusetts guy was pushy and and, and pig headed. These stories work as kind of a a psychological healing tool of the people Uh, by rewriting the legend, North Carolina and its people get to have, the mental and spiritual justice that re- reality refused to offer them. And I think I think that's great, because I think that's the real power of storytelling and folklore, and it's way more important than the truth of a story ever could be. Okay, well, my swamp ghost is a swamp witch, which I think I said I was going to do a swamp witch, and then I found a swamp witch. You did witch. say that. I had little doubt that's what you'd end up with. Well... I think it depends on who you are and where you're from. If you're going to use the phrase swamp witch, voodoo priestess, she's referred to as a voodoo queen periodically here. But um, voodoo, voodoo yes queen, voodoo yes queen, are voodoo queens things? Like I know voodoo priestesses. Is anyone a voodoo queen besides Marie Laveau? I don't know. Because can't there only cause... really be one voodoo queen? I would think so, but it seems like a term that does get thrown around a lot. So I don't really know for sure maybe maybe there's regional queens maybe queen isn't as overarching as it might be in some other situations i don't obviously i am not a voodoo expert my voodoo knowledge is more based on the loa side of things than the uh, practitioner side of things on the what side of things the loa those are the voodoo spirits that they uh, worship okay not aloha the aloha side of voodoo no loa <laughs> the aloha side so we worked real hard on the trying to find the correct pronunciation for this particular wetlands area. If we're wrong, I apologize profusely. I only pronounce some words inappropriately on purpose, and those <laughs> words are usually like a chimichanga. <laughs> and that's just for our very first Patreon. Very first patron? Our very first patron. Shout out to Tawny and her chimichangas. Just a little chimichanga. <laughs> So, we're going to talk about a voodoo priestess of Manchac wetlands. We decided Manchac, right? Manchac, baby, Manchac. Mayonnaise wetlands. That sounds messy. <laughs> We've already apologized for our pronunciation, so that means that we can just do whatever the fuck we want with the pronunciation. Exactly. Right um, well, I said Mayonnaise wetlands, and then the first note I looked at was about half an hour northwest of New Orleans are thick with swamp ooze. Mayonnaise swamp ooze. Uh, <laughs> why is something so wrong with me that that made me want mayonnaise? <laughs> mayonnaise and chicken. Sounds delicious. Today I'm cooking with white people. <laughs> you have to be careful, though. You don't want your mayonnaise to get too spicy. <laughs> but it goes great in a salad. So, anyway. Focusing. Focus. Focus. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you about Juliet, the voodoo queen of Manchac Swamp. I'm going to be honest. I've seen her name as Juliet Brown or Julie, or her last name is white or black. So we know she has a color for her last name and will probably respond to Julie. All right. So we're looking back uh, around 1915, I believe here, to a lovely wetlands outside of New Orleans 
Julie, Juliet, Miss Brown, if you're nasty, <laughs> or Julie White, Julie Black, what, so many. I just, uh, Julie Green, Julie Red, Julie Rainbow. Julie Chartreuse. Anyway, <laughs> she uh, lived on the edge of the swamp in kind of a remote but not completely run down portion of New Orleans. There was three small towns there, Renier, Rudock, and Napton. On the edge of this wetland, there's a lake there, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. <laughs> so it said that although Julia, Juliet, Julie, or Jules here, was um, into some of the more darker aspects of voodoo, she did work with a lot of the townspeople. And I have found different sources saying that she was friendly and more sources. Well, and some sources saying she was more of like a recluse. But it seems like she at least was friendly with the town folks and probably did some shady side work for them that they didn't want people to know about. We're talking a good, proper, old-style witch where she lives on the outskirts of town and everybody's afraid of her, but everyone also respects her and goes to her when they're in trouble. Type yeah, thing. exactly. She is she is the swamp's granny weatherwax. She is my life goals. <laughs> so it said that she would sit on her porch and sing little songs that you could hear from quite a ways away. One of the songs she would sing was about when she died, she was going to take everybody with her. <laughs> so, you know, she wasn't a snuggly witch. She's into black metal. <laughs> yeah. One day I'm going to die and I'm going to take the whole town with me. Was what she would just sit on her porch in her rocking chair and sing. So then the story has it that she died in September of 1915. And I've seen a couple of different ways this is put. Some sources say the day she died this happened. Some just say the day of her funeral. But a huge hurricane went through Louisiana September 15th, 1915. It destroyed all three of those towns. It killed over 50 people in Frenier. I think it killed 200 approximately people total. So here's a quote from a newspaper. This is from the New Orleans Times. Picayune? Sorry. That word I'm sure I'm saying wrong. From October 2nd, 1915. And there is offensive language in this because it's from New Orleans in 1915. So I apologize. Many pranks were played by wind and tide. Negroes have gathered for miles round to attend the funeral of Aunt Julie Brown, an old negress who was well known in that section and was a big property owner. The funeral was scheduled and Aunt Julie had been placed in her casket. And the casket, in turn, had been placed in the customary wooden box and sealed. At four o'clock, however, the storm had become so violent that the Negroes left the house in a stampede, abandoning the corpse. The corpse was found Thursday, and so was the wooden box, but the casket has never been found. That's weird. Yeah, I'm like, the middle part <laughs> went missing. But I also read some stories about, like, a one man holding on to an upturned cypress tree while he fought the winds that were trying to, like, pull everyone into the like the swamp when he was just like trying to hold on for dear life and block out the screams of all of the people drowning around him. Like, you know, this is, this is a, a pretty big storm. So some people think she cursed the swamp because people were taking it for granted. One of the articles I read had talked to Bloody Mary, who is an infamous character in voodoo, very well known in New Orleans. And she doesn't think that Aunt Julie would have cursed the swamp. That's not actually the primary purpose of voodoo. Voodoo is more about healing and learning, not about cursing people. But there is, you know, right-hand magic and left-hand magic in voodoo. So it's not that you're above cursing people. It's just not your primary goal in most situations. Well, and also a lot of, of voodoo is based on making deals with the spirits and the loa. So... And, and this is just spitballing here, but theoretically, she could have made a deal with some Loa that said that, yeah, I'll help you with these things, but after you die, I'm sending a disaster to collect you, and it's going to swoop through the town. And at the time, that might have sounded like a good deal to her. Maybe that's why she knew that... that the town was going to go was, down with her. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to say. We weren't there. In my American folk, magic is usually what I classify my pagan practices as so i've i've done some voodoo research and yeah i wouldn't say that a woman who had a reasonable relationship with this town is going to curse it that doesn't make any sense but 
you know, local legends are local legends for a reason. So anyway, that's what happened. It is now said that you're not supposed to be in the swamp at night, that you might hear her singing. I assume that's a bad sign. Yeah. It, <laughs> it doesn't seem like anyone else has mysteriously perished since that hurricane in that area. But the swamp is supposed to have extra spook even for a swamp. <laughs> you are supposed to be careful in that swamp. You're not supposed to be disrespectful because there is a chance the curse will follow you out. <laughs> that being said, I I think Julie sounds like an interesting lady. I would hang out with Aunt Julie. <laughs> not on the day of the hurricane, albeit. And I'm very curious where her <laughs> casket went. So I guess that's more of a, a swamp curse, a spooky swamp story, not a swamp ghost story. Yeah, yeah well, that's fine. We're, our batting average for hitting the actual topic of these shows usually is pretty low. You know, so I think we can get away with my that. My goal is a good creep, a good spook, not necessarily a, to follow rules, guidelines. More the guidelines. That's right. That's right. Guidelines have no space in ghost stories. No rules have no Yeah. I don't know. Rules are against the rules and ghost exactly. stories. Exactly. Fucking rules. Or something. Fucking fuck rules. What What do we want to call this drink? I don't know. I thought we were circling something like Voodoo Queen Bee, but I don't I know mean, for sure. I mean, I didn't we... really like Voodoo Queen Bee, but I did like... Okay. Uh, well, you're the, the, you're the uh, liked, bartender here. I like the, your... the Voodoo Yas Queen. The Voodoo Yas Queen? Yes! Voodoo Yas Queen? Yas Voodoo Queen? I think Voodoo Yas Queen Voodoo, yes. So I wanted to do a swampy drink. I did consider doing like a swampy play on a hurricane, but that's just mostly because I'm kind of on a passion fruit kick. So that's <laughs> not what I ended up doing. Okay. This drink, once you have the pieces, is going to be pretty simple. Our Voodoo Yes Queen. This is going to be a tequila based drink because I haven't done a tequila based drink yet and I love tequila. <laughs> For shame. No tequila yet. I know. We've done gin like four times, but no tequila. I know. So we only did gin like twice, but still. <laughs> and I have some Empress 1908 gin I really need to play with. Side trunk uh, here. It's a butterfly pea blossom gin, so it's that nice purple color. You can play with mm. it. So yeah, acid. <laughs> I want all the gins. All the gins. <laughs> the G I N's and the D J I N N. I was just thinking we're gonna at some point have to do a a gin gin episode. Gin gin. A ginger gin gin. And then we'll eat those gin gin candies while we do it. And then you'll lecture me <laughs> that I've had like multiple psychics tell me one of my spirit guides is a gin. And I don't futz with the gins. <laughs> I'm not about them. You don't got to, <laughs> but they're, they're my buddies, apparently. <laughs> anyway, back to the Yas Voodoo Queen. So we are going to infuse some uh, tequila with some honey. Not a lot, just enough to give it a little a little depth, a little more depth of flavor, a little bit of sweetness. So when you say infuse, how does that work? Is it just adding honey or is there something we got to do to it? Basically, basically we're just okay. going to, I mean, yeah. I've never honey infused an alcohol. So I believe okay. I'm just going to mix honey with it and let it sit for a few days. Ah. But I will report back in the directions if this is not successful. <laughs> and then I am going to make a matcha lemonade so you know it's going to be a green tea lemonade and essentially we're going to mix the green tea lemonade and the honey infused tequila and we're going to have a nice little swampy green tequila drink the dog butt appearing really close to my head (laughs) we're not going to have a dog butt infused drink i hope Uh, hope so that's that's the plan of attack here. All right. And Voodoo Yas Queen. Voodoo Yas Queen. And I'll come up with some pretty way to garnish it because I haven't decided on that yet. Maybe I'll just like grow some fig leaves. Spanish moss. Yeah. Well, I was thinking like <laughs> twigs and leaves. I think I said stwigs. 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 It's like sticks and twigs. We call them the stwig. What is a uh, brown and sticky lays on the ground? It's a stick! <laughs> uh... I used to gauge my level of tired when we were doing like set construction nights, in like high school on mm-hmm. when the joke, what's red and looks like a bucket, a red bucket. Like when that's funny, your sleep deprivation levels are near hallucination. <laughs> that is, that's my gauge. I can see that. Yeah. All right. I guess that's uh, all we've got for this episode then. 
Uh, next episode, we're going to do sex ghosts. We're not going to do sex ghosts. We're going to talk right. about sex ghosts. Nick's going to do a sex ghost. Are you going to be doing like an official investigation or are you just going to go check it out? I'm just going to check it out. I'm not going to do a whole lot. I was going to email some of the people there and, and kind of ask a couple questions, but I wasn't planning on doing anything real interesting. The mansion that she lived in is a museum, and then there's other buildings for... They don't. They, they used to have people stay in the mansion, but they don't do that anymore. I believe it's all museum space now. But you're allowed to kind of freely tour it on your own from 8 to 8. I did ghost tours while I was rather pregnant last year, though. Well, yeah. I guess that was 2019, that, so that was not last year. It I, feels like last year. I keep thinking of 2019 as last year because... 2020 was kind of a write-off. <laughs> I did uh, I did host and present ghost tours at uh, Big of Knoll in Jacksonville. That's the year, though, I think... No, it was the year before we really pissed off the ghosts. <laughs> you just had to go and baggins it up, didn't you? They would get mad at us every year during the ghost tours. And then... Oh, no, maybe it was... No, it was the year before I was pregnant that the tire electrical system stopped working and had to be replaced for like $30,000 right after the ghost tours. Ah! Yeah. That's a little much. Um, I was really bummed with that one because I was like, I had walked the block to the nearby grocery store and was coming back to check on everybody at the end of the night before I went home. And I was like walking up the, to the property and it was like November, December. It was like holiday season time, at least close to that. It was cold and dark out and the up the restaurant was in the basement. And then all the upstairs was like event spaces and private offices. So there was nobody up there at this point in time. And I just started watching the lights just like going on and off all over sporadically in the entire building. So I pulled out my camera or my phone to take a video. And as soon as I like opened the camera, it stopped. <laughs> like, God damn it. There's a, there's a verb. <laughs> so um, Nick's going to try to have sex with a ghost. We have a promotion running right now for some free stickers if you check out our in. Instagram. Why don't you share what that promotion is right now for people who aren't on Instagram so they, I know you're stuck behind a dog right now. It's a little awkward. <laughs> so, that, so that people who aren't on Instagram know how to do the non-Instagram version of the uh, promotion. Okay, so we got an assortment of stickers in that we're willing to just give you because we're nice like that. Fancy. Fancy. We're not going to give you all of the stickers unless you do multiple things because i'm into bribes but here's the thing you can do you can like us on instagram go to the sticker post and tag three friends then send us a dm that you did it and i will send you some stickers or you can go on to your favorite podcast purveyor provider platform we'll go with platform <laughs> uh go into your favorite podcast platform like subscribe leave us a review actually i think i just said leave us a review but you know we would prefer if you liked or su subscribe to us also yeah and the thing is i don't even know is anyone even because spotify doesn't do reviews apple does reviews apple does reviews if, i don't know if google does or not what well you know whatever you can do yeah. something <laughs> to shamelessly promote us give us some good feedback stroke my ego i'll give you a sticker if you go above and beyond what she asked, she might even give you some extra stickers. We'll see. And some pictures of Theo's feet. <laughs> Dog paws. We should also mention that we do have a full set of the stickers for folks who sign up for our Patreon. Your first month, we will send you a pack of these stickers. Each design, all five designs. Yeah. Because, I mean, everyone wants a Daddy Special Sausage sticker to put on their Hydro Flask laptop, Bisco Girl... I think everybody should want a legally obtained corpse sticker to just slap on, I don't know, random packages that they're mailing. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. All right. So be sure to check out our show notes. That's where we have links to our socials and to the various podcast providers. Our website is boozeandspirits.com. Want anything else there? Boozeandspirits.com. Um, yeah. Usually it takes us like 10 minutes to get through all this, but I've kind of accidentally stumbled on a way to do it in 30 seconds. Or maybe it's because <laughs> we're sober. Um, maybe. 
like us on Instagram, or follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook. Check out the Patreon, uh, check out the YouTube. We are working to add, to create more content for YouTube right now. It's primarily just the YouTube version of our podcast, because I know some people like to use YouTube for their audio purposes, but we are working on some video content to stick up there. If you have things you want to see from the show, you can let us know. We'll consider yeah, it at least. Free. We're pretty stubborn, but, you know, if it's cool, we'll probably do it. We are stubborn. We are stubborn and pig-headed, but we're also willing to at least listen to a suggestion. I mean, <laughs> yeah, basically the whole show is behind the scenes. It's just Nick and I fighting over things we think we should do. Yeah, there's a lot of that. We'll start sharing our arguments. Our, our messenger arguments. We'll start posting those on Instagram. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go pick up my kid and then go get a nerve section study done. If anyone wants to. Ooh, trade lives. Want me to live stream <laughs> getting needles <laughs> shoved in my legs today? They probably won't let me up. All right. Please drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't end up our next ghost. You wanted to That's say it, right. didn't you? Well, you, you got it in there. It's, it, look, look, we're finishing each other's sandwiches. It's great. All right. That being said, Kate needs a sandwich. Kate needs a sandwich. It needs to uh, probably start editing a podcast. <laughs> right. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. I'll feed us. Do a do to you and you. Just trying to find a good spot to start seeing Chuck yesterday.